They better stay away. Who can sleep with you around? And don't start humming. Well, how about if I whistle? I do requests. Just keep an eye on that door over there. You didn't know I was talented, did you? Old dad, paper shredder. Go sleep with Chuck, will you? You're a weirdo, Benjamin. I'm true. I am but a well a machine is what I am. Yeah. You know, I'm lucky to have you for a partner, Madigan. Yeah, I know. I mean, some guys draw a real pain in the, uh, you know what, for a partner. And I'm a wonderful human being. Oh, no question about that. I mean, who else would volunteer as partner for a stick out like this one? This creep's still running around loose because we blew it. Hey, looks like our boy. It do indeed. I thought he killed you.
Hi, honey. Uh, Hi. Anything? No, uh, nothing. Oh, honey, would you get the ironing board out for me? I want to do this uniform. For what? For what? I told Maury I'd work the lunch counter during the lunch rush. Now, look, Verna. But you got to bring in the bread till I get something fine, OK? But I'll be damned if I'm going to sit around on my dumb fat can while you're killing yourself working double shifts. Max, you're hurting me. So what else is new? Come on, muscles. The ironing board, huh? I'm going to take a shower. Bill? Bill, how are you? How about you, old shark? You know, I'm almost glad you're based out on the West Coast. I simply cannot abide seeing that perpetually healthy suntan. How's Ruthie? Sends her love. Judith looks well. It's quite a family you've got, Albert. Quite a family. Well, if you came into town more than once or twice a year for board meetings, you'd see them once in a while. I'm not too sure they'd be so tickled to see me this time, Albert. Oh, nonsense. Now, as a company director and a major stockholder in this company, you have every single right in the world to institute investigatory legal proceedings against it. Personally, I applaud your forthrightness, however misapplied. Albert, if I prove my allegations of these irregularities, there's a pretty strong possibility you'll go to jail. <laughs> You know, I must confess, nothing in the world would give me greater pleasure than to see this Palm Springs playboy friend of mine throw away a couple of hundred thousand dollars in legal fees for nothing. Come on, go to jail. Why not save us both the risk, Alan? Meaning? New secretary out? It's a private line. Excuse me, sir. Hello? Oh, uh, hello. I, uh... Um, do you mind if I call you back? I'm just finishing up a business meeting. It'll just take a few minutes. Now, Bill, you were saying... I was giving you a way out. If you're smart enough to take it. Say, Albert, on that, uh... Oh, I'm sorry. That's all right, Joe. Come on in. Tyler? Mr. Lido. I, uh, I wouldn't want to disturb. No nonsense. As a matter of fact, I believe Bill here was even about to make us a compromise offer, Bill. I suppose so, in a way. Albert, we are friends. You and I. Now, for heaven's sake, let's stop this thing before it goes any farther. You know I'll be successful in court. You know what this will do to you. Now, just a minute, Mr. Tyler. You butt out of this, kid. Where'd you ever find this one, Albert? I've always meant to ask you. No offense, Mr. Lido, no offense. I simply have an aversion to anything parasitic. Really? I didn't know you had an aversion to anything. All right, Albert. Flat out. Lay it on the line, Tom. I came here to give you the chance to step down on your own. Resign. Now. Save you a lot of embarrassment. And me a lot of those legal fees. Now, how about it? Please, Albert. Bill, you go back to court. And if you actually think you have some kind of a case, insider trading, manipulation of capital assets, or whatever it is you're scraping around for, you had better prove it. Your 
we're absolutely sure he can nail us. Let's look that way. Hello, Mr. Benham. I uh, got your calling card. That's just a down payment for uh, services to be rendered. Yeah, well, you sent 10,000. The price will be 50. 25 up front, 25 when it's done. Agreed, you'll get the other 15 immediately. Plus the name of the subject and whatever else. Ah, you're hiring me. It's you I meet. Face to face, from your hand to my hand. No flunkies, no messengers. I have a position to protect, Mr. Benjamin. So do I, rich man. So I'll tell you where, and I'll tell you when, and you'll be there, alone, or no deal. All right, I'm listening. Tonight, 11 o'clock exactly, on the South Street Pier. How will I know you? I'll find you. All right, I'll be there. Well, Joe, you did say he'd come around with a bit of proper inducement. Now, you're absolutely sure that he's capable booted off the police force three years ago. Tried a dozen jobs since then, failed at all of them. It's tough, desperate, lots of savvy. Not a single mob connection to worry about afterwards. Sir, I believe I've picked you just about the ripest apple around. For something of this nature, that is. Totally unthinkable, that eh, Joe. To have another human being murdered. Bill Tyler man I've known for 27 years. I didn't say that, Albert. I'll tell you what I'm doing, Joe. I am doing business, period. Yes, sir. Put your whole life into a business. And it becomes your life. So that if... when you have to do something... Albert, you don't have to sell me. Tyler puts you out of business, I'm out as well. Believe me, I'm in this with you all the way. Fine, Verna. I look like hell is how I look. And don't ask me if Max is okay, because if he was okay, I sure would never have left a message to meet you. <laughs> Same old Verna. Always wondered why you were so crazy about me. I just never liked having another car. Get more of my own husband than I did. Okay. Now, what about Max? Dan, I think he's on his way toward doing something out of line. Just something shady, but something bad. I don't know. Oh, Verna, you're dreaming. I know old Dad like I know me. False. You used to know him. Well, I used to know him. He dropped this into my lap yesterday. He said he was hired to go to Chicago to check out the extracurricular love lives of some corporation executive or something. Well, thousand dollars seems like a reasonable fee for that. Oh, stop it, Dan his private investigator's license five months after he got it. You know that. So he took a job under the table. What's the big deal? You tell me. What legit business firm would hire a blackballed ex-cop unless it was something bad? When he was packing, I saw him stuff five or six of those into an envelope. Nobody had risked that kind of money on Max. Not for something on the up and up. Not anymore. You got a number on him in Chicago? Nope. He always leaves you an emergency number. Not this time. Consecutive serial numbers, huh? You sure he went to Chicago? I saw his airline ticket. What airport? LaGuardia. Why? 
Come on, let's take a ride. Passengers move to board flight 221 to San Juan. May now board through gate 16. Passengers book to board flight 221 to San Juan. May now board through gate 16. Well, this is the last section of walkers. Well, just make sure you look for two sixes or more. My man's got a thing about double sixes. said Max was checked off as being on the plane. Maybe. What are you doing? Just checking. Hey. That's Max's. Yeah. If you wouldn't take any of that, I have to have a written order. No, that's OK. There's a pretty good hunch of double sixes, huh? Yeah, thanks, officer. That'll do it. But it must be OK, then. That pearl handles Max's personal four-leaf clover. Wherever he is, he'd never do anything without taking that with him. What's the matter? Come on, I'll take you home. But you're not following. What I mean is, I must have been wrong about what I was thinking. Yeah, come on. Sure, I know how he feels about that damn pearl handle. Good luck piece. Now, if he left that, it's because he needed a cold gun. Clean, unregistered, untraceable. Now, I don't follow. There's only one caper that'd make Max go for a cold gun. Murder. You're crazy. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Where does he keep his work stuff? Now, what's missing in there besides a pearl hand? Oh, I know. Take it easy, Take will you? Take it easy, he said. Listen to him, big buddy. He tells me my husband's gonna go out and murder somebody, and then he tells me to take it easy. The Ghana. I don't know why I call you that all the time. No, why? Max used to come home and joke every night about how you used to whine and dine yourself on the arm at every hot shot restaurant in New York City while we ate leftovers. So to me, trying to feed my man, that was no joke. That you take, and he wouldn't, and he had to suffer for it. Okay, so I'm a gunner. So tell me, where have you been these three last awful years? Ah, uh, hold it. You know how many times I called. And you know how many times he avoided me or anybody else who tried to help. That's called pride. That's called dumb. OK. Ganef or no Ganef, I'll try to find him. Sam? I know. Rich man. Mr. Benjamin. I'm not overly familiar with procedure in these matters. What comes first? Well, what comes first is the rest of the down payment. Shall we stroll? Uh, what do you want to hit? William Tyler. Tyler? You've heard of him? Who hasn't? Well, then you should know he won't be easy to get to. <laughs> it won't be easy. He's always surrounded with bodyguards. Why don't you ask me to knock off Cho and Lai while you're at it? Just take care of Tyler. After all, that's why you're being paid so much money. Thank you. 
fifty out of a dollar. Say, I tried to go up to my room a minute ago, and that fellow over there, well, he wouldn't let me use that elevator. I don't blame you if you're annoyed. Why has he the right to take up an entire elevator? Yeah, well, who is it? Well, between you and me, it's one Mr. Tyler, the high financier. He's been written up in dozens of magazines. Oh, that Mr. Tyler? Oh, Mr. Tyler has rented the entire 15th floor. That elevator goes up to 15 only. Well, if fellow spends that kind of money, I guess he deserves to have an elevator thrown in, huh? You can do anything with money nowadays. I think it's very annoying. I know what you mean. Sorry, sir, this floor is privately occupied. Isn't this 16? Uh, no, sir, it's the 15th floor. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Excuse me, it's my mistake. Uh, that's uh, quite all right, sir. word, Dan. And I okayed your opening those lockers at the airport on your say-so. Yes, sir, I appreciate it. Yeah, but now you come waltzing in here. And you tell me you were on some sentimental journey over a man any cop would spit on. Oh, now, wait a minute, Lieutenant. What? Sir, I think you must have that Petrucci file in there somewhere, because we've been... Then again, if I knew where it was, I wouldn't be asking for it. Max Benjamin was the kind of cop who makes us all look bad. Brutal, trigger-happy. Dan, he couldn't make an arrest without us getting an excessive force violation. Oh, knock it off, Lieutenant. He got three citations for bravery, 270 arrests, and 159 convictions. Now, what the and hell he more he shot do down an unarmed man who had already surrendered. What do you want? Well, sir, this rescheduling of the vacation times for the men. I just... Out. Okay. Well, out. Just out. I can't cope with it now. Out. Dan, you don't even know for certain Max Benjamin's out trying to make himself a hit. And this department just doesn't have time to look around. Well, I owe him a hell of a lot more than a little of my time. Well, this department does not. Request denied. What? Lieutenant, you absolutely sure you don't have that Petrucci Then again, you're driving somewhere. me right up the wall, and I don't want to hear from you, understand? Well? Request permission for a couple of days off. Denied. Back to work. No, sir. What? I said no, sir. Well, what does that mean? That means I'm going on sick leave. Sick leave? Yes, sir. Dan, you're no more sick than I am. Madigan, if just one word comes down to this department, that you've been out on the street using that badge to help Benjamin, just one word, you'll find yourself back on that same street, but this time without the badge. Clear? Clear as a bell. Toodaloo, Lieutenant. Then again! How many times you and Madigan come in this store and push me around? And now here you are asking me to do you a favor. All right, all right. How many times did you two dudes hustle me down to the precinct and give me a lot of guff? Now look, Eloise. Great big, rough, honest cop. Well, you are down to street level now, begging me to get you a cold gun. Ooh, I love it. OK, do we do business or don't we? Yes, we can do business. Did you want a rifle or a little bitty handgun? S&W 38, four-inch barrel. 
400. 400? Special price. Listen, if you was an ex-federal cop, it'd be 500. And that is payable in advance, sugar ball. Quick delivery. SMW type 38 4H. Mm, let me see. Yeah, I think one of those can be found. Yeah, this has got to be cold, friend. Very cold. Maybe this one's fresh out of the box. Beautiful. You got it. Mr. Benneman, why don't you come back here in a couple of hours? Go put your eyelashes on. You're going to make a run for me. Oh, Augie. Come on, will you move? Well, how does it look? Bad. Judge is going over the affidavits. Tyler will get his day in court, all right. It's a possibility we could get a postponement, I suppose, but quite frankly, I don't think that would... Albert, you seem a little preoccupied. Yes, I suppose I am. Second thoughts? No. I don't think you realize how truly strong you are, Albert. I know I'm merely your shadow, your boy, as no, it no, were, but... please don't sell yourself short. The past couple of years, you've been invaluable. Oh, no. Now, look, I can do the everyday hatchet work, all right. I suppose I could even destroy a man psychologically. Unnerve him to the point where he doesn't have enough spine to stand in the way anymore. But to be able to do what you're doing, to order a human being murdered in cold blood just because he threatens your personal position, well, Albert, I have to confess it, it's out of my league. Let alone being able to live with the knowledge that a scum like Max Bennerman might someday come forward and speak up about what you've hired him to do. What? I'll tell you straight, sir, I have never appreciated more than now the loneliness of command. Any more than I suppose your wife could in the event that this thing were to, uh... <laughs> come on over to the club, Albert. Let's have a few laughs with the boys, huh? Where you been? Ah. How you been, Augie? What is this? Relax, Augie. This is just an informal visit. I'm here only as a concerned citizen. So you are not under arrest. You do not have the right to counsel. And any lies you tell will be shoved down your fat throat. Now, how many guns you peddled in the last couple of days? Oh, come on, Madigan, I'm clean. You know I didn't peddle any guns. <laughs> it's very naughty to tell a lie to a concerned citizen, Augie. <clears throat> Not in front of broad, huh? How many guns? Two, just two. Who ordered them? Hey, if I tell you that, I may as well go jump in the river. Look, you want to shove me around some more? Go ahead and shove. But names I don't give. No way. No way. Well, that's very noble of you. Okay, turn them out. What? Your pockets, turn them out. That's it. Okay, the purse, come on, dump it. To come in. Why, what's the matter with it? The serial numbers make me nervous. When did they come in? Today. Look, if that's funny money, I had nothing to do with it. What did they buy, Augie? Now, I'm not going to ask you again. SMW, four inch barrel. Where did it come from? Augie. Eloise. Oh, yeah. The broad with the candy store, huh? Look, I'm no fink. You didn't hear it from me. Augie, calm yourself. Now, you be a good little boy and say your prayers, and when I'm on duty again, I'll come on back and bust you, okay? Okay?
Now, what's a terrible person like you doing with a nice boy like that? I don't know. You don't, huh? When did Eloise take delivery? Just about 20 minutes ago. Tuck these away somewhere. You can find the room. Dad. <laughs> hey, you got older. Well, it's all that easy to bring a living, you know. <laughs> hey, what are you doing in this end of the show? I'm just checking the territory. I thought that was you going into Eloise's there, but I wasn't sure. Oh, uh, well, just a lucky coincidence. Yeah. Hey, where are you going? I'll drop you. Oh, that's all right, Dan. I'm just on my way. Ah, come on, I'll drop you. Fine. Maxie, what have you been up to? Uh, nothing spectacular. Robbing banks, real kidnapping shit. <laughs> How's Vernon? Well, she don't ask about you too often, I'll tell you that. Yeah, I can figure that. Sitting in this dumb seat again. Kind of weird. <laughs> I feel pretty far away more this time. How far, Max? <laughs> You're terrific. Still as subtle as a graceful train wreck. Come on, you got something stuck in your gullet? Spit it out, would you? You just bought a cold gun from Eloise. s and w with a four-inch barrel. I'm asking you to hand it over. Then go home to your wife and forget it. How about it, Max? Come on. What would I want with a cold gun? Hey, Dan, you got a little cuckoo? What the hell happened to your brains? What's the matter with you? Now, look. Whatever or whoever made you come looking for me, believe it or not, I appreciate it. But you're dead wrong, buddy. Come on, Max. Give me the gun. I just told you I don't have a gun. Give it to me. Got off the phone with the attorneys. We're being subpoenaed on Thursday. Fate accompli that. Unless you're Mr. Benerman stops him. I'll call Benerman, tell him it has to be no later than tomorrow. You know that point you made, Joe, the other day about 
by possibly having the specter of Bennerman hanging over me afterward. So what do I do? Do I hire a second assassin to kill the first one? And then the third one to take care of the second one, ad infinitum? See, we both agree there's only one reasonable solution to that. Reasonable? You mean for me to personally murder the murderer? Me? As you said, Albert. Only you and I know about Benjamin. If you're asking who else is there, but you to make sure that he doesn't come back on you, there's me. Are you trying to tell me you'd actually do it for me? You would actually go with a gun? No, not if you're going to do it, Albert. Not if you can meet with Benjamin after he kills Tyler, and instead of giving him $25,000, you put a bullet between his eyes. Can you do that, Albert? Has to be done. I can't. I can't. No. Now, how can I ask I you? I intend to be rewarded quite handsomely, Albert. You see, you vote 52% of the voting shares of this conglomerate. I hold a meager 10%. Now, if I were to have 21 more and you were to have 21 less, I'd have as many shares as you do. So I will commit your murder for you, Albert, in return for your proxy giving me exactly one half of your voting shares of this entire marvelous little empire. I'm calling it off. There'll be no killing. Now get out. And go where, Albert? To Tyler? To your own shareholders? The SEC? The news media? Very scandalous affair, this one. tell Bennerman to get rid of Tyler by tomorrow. I, in turn, will personally take care of Bennerman as soon as your signed voting proxies are on my desk. Good night, Albert. Hello. It's me. What's his name? Max. Honey, you all right? Listen, Bertha. Max, where are you? I want you to know something about me. And everything. Max, Dan Madigan is looking for you. Now, wherever you are, I want you to just please, please call him up. I already talked to Dan. There's some cops that wear their badges and guns like, well, like a short guy would want to wear elevator shoes, you know? 
I mean, I was never that kind of a cop. I know that. I love the law. Keeping the animals in the cages. It's an important thing to do. Max, Dan said you were maybe going to go out and kill somebody for money. The money is for you, Vina. That's all I can leave you with. No. Well, I left you that thousand already, right? Okay. Now, in about a week or so, you go to the safety deposit box at the bank. Max. Oh, Werner. I'm not going to get to see anymore. I mean, I won't let you see me anymore. But the money. No idea where he was, huh? He wouldn't tell me. He's gone, Dan. Down the tube and into the sewers. Where are you going? Down the tube and into the sewers. scruples. On the other hand, you never sat around ordering straight shots either. Corny, go wipe some glasses, huh? Why do I still think about you, huh, Max? How's the wife? Doing pretty good, eh, Maureen? Nice place. Mm, thanks. Look, uh, when you close up, uh, unless you got some guy waiting for you or something. Uh... You're kidding. Well, just maybe sack out on your couch for a few hours. I mean, if it's OK. Oh, sure. You could use the couch. Anything else I've got you wanted, I guess you could use that, too. Now, why all of a sudden me, Max? Why my couch, my company? Well, at least uh, suggest something we can drink to. Water that knows enough to seek its own level. to be today. Can you do it today? Hold on a minute. Um, he comes back for lunch to his suite uh, between 1220 and 1230. That only gives me three hours. And 25,000 more dollars. Okay. Now look, if I pull it off right, it'll be all over the news. So you meet me alone, two o'clock sharp, south end of Woods Island, okay? You needn't worry. You do your job, I'll do mine. And your proxies. Ready for your signature, sir?
I uh, wanted to thank you for the use of the couch. What? It's still there. Just one flight up. Say the word, I'll go out and get a cookbook to go with it. <laughs> Bad timing, honey. Look, I left an envelope behind your cash register. Oh, yeah. Some money and a, and a key. Yeah, well, the key's to a locker at LaGuardia. Now, I want you to take it, and I want you to do me a favor. Sure, I... I was just going to go out to the bank, but I... I... Just listen to me, will you? It's, it's important. Uh, Irene, I, I don't have too much time. talk is that from a lady who likes cops? Huh. Well, one cop, anyway. You seen him, Marine? Look, if you don't mind, we are still closed, and I'm on my way out. Wow, you're sure getting jumpy in your old age. If you're looking for that bust-out ex-partner of yours, why don't you try his wife? Uh, well, I see the pickup business must be picking up. Fancy coat, working out of a classy saloon. How's tricks lately? I have had a legit business going here for two years now, foul mouth, and you know it. No, I didn't. Out! I, I mean it, Madigan. Now, just leave me alone. Jumpy, 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 jumpy. Okay, sweetie pie. Argentina, huh? So? Why would Max want to go to Argentina? I didn't ask. Then I'll tell you. He took a contract. I don't believe you. Oh, yes, you do. Where is he? I, 
I don't know. Honestly, well, come on, I don't. Where'd you get the key to this locker? Well, he, he stayed over last night. Where'd he go when he left your place? I dropped him off. Where? I don't know. I, I... Come on, where? In the middle of a block on East 48th Street. Okay, come on. Now, just hold it, Madigan. If you are lying to me, if you've made a think go. out of me... It was just about here. Yeah, that figures. Max always liked to use office buildings for stakeouts. Okay, Marine, thanks for your help. I'll see you around. heard from the time the clock fell on my pillow during the night and the alarm went off in my ears. Thank you. 
a list of all your guests on the 15th floor, please. Well, as a matter of fact, we, we only have one guest on the What's his name? Uh, Mr. Tyler. May I ask? Is he in the hotel it? now? Uh, no. No, but uh, he should be back any minute. It's almost 20 minutes past 12. Yes, here he comes now. The tall man in the blue coat. Okay, thanks. Not at all. I'd like to go up to your suite with you. I think there's going to be an attempt on your life. On my life? Yes, sir. Come on, officer. Is this part of New York's official frighten the tourist policy? Well, it's not exactly official, but it could be frightening for you. Yeah, well. <laughs> I'm telling you, you're going to run into a hired assassin. Hired assassin? That's right. Well, I think if there were any such threat, my private security would be more than ample.
down the ramp. was taken by ambulance to the 52nd Street Hospital, where he was pronounced dead on arrival. J.L. Wells, a personal bodyguard of Mr. Tyler's, was accompanying the financier when the shooting occurred. Wells' condition is described as critical by doctors at the hospital. Police at the scene have not yet made any statement regarding the identity of the gunman, although hotel employees have acknowledged that a possible suspect was seen fleeing the hotel at the time of the shooting. You heard the news, let's have it. $10,000 approximately $50,000. $25,000 up front, $25,000 when it's done. Agreed. You'll get the other $15,000 immediately. Plus the name of the subject and whatever else. Ah. You're hiring me. It's you I meet. Face to face. From your hand to my hand. No flunkies, no messing.